And I still love it and it's still great, but the problem is I'm doing just crazy video edits. Okay, I'm gonna try not to get distracted by how literally the entire economy and stock market is on fire and you know, I have a bunch of money in Nokia and stuff. I'm gonna to try to focus on something a bit more innocent, less likely to be manipulated by large corporations. I wanna talk about exactly why I decided to leave the world of 60% mechanical keyboards behind and replace my classic 60% mechanical keyboards with a new daily driver, the Techware Phantom that Techware kindly sent over for me to use on Christmas last year. And maybe there's some things you can learn, I, I guess, I don't know. Now before I start this video, if you have any questions you want to ask, ask away in the comment section or link the description, you have my Discord and Instagram. I reply to everything pretty much everywhere. Y yeah. Okay, so let's talk about mechanical keyboards and why I love them so much and also my journey so far with them. I have made videos like this in the past, but it's always nice to have a little recap. I love mechanical keyboards because they feel great to type on. They're way more ergonomic and comfortable than a standard default membrane keyboard. And I really like the sound and tactile feeling that they give. You know, they feel solid, they feel mechanical. They feel like I'm in touch with kind of whatever I'm working on, be it typing a script or an email or just gaming. And if I was a gamer, you know, a mechanical keyboard generally will be a bit more responsive, a bit faster than a membrane keyboard. On top of that, if you are someone who gets a mechanical keyboard and a decent one at that, you're gonna realize that mechanical keyboards are gonna last way longer than membrane keyboards because once you get a bit of gunk in membrane keyboards, they get all funky, uncomfortable to type on, and it's just a flat out not having a good time experience. So I like mechanical keyboards for those few reasons, and also because there's this beautiful community and world behind them where you can basically customize them endlessly, and that I think is just awesome. I personally, use a bunch of different mechanical keyboards. And if you wanna go back in terms of history of mechanical keyboards, I started with a 10 keyless mechanical keyboard from this Chinese brand called Red Dragon, New Dragon. I'm not sure what it was called, but it was Chinese brand that didn't even have actually an English name, I was quite sure. But apparently they sponsored Vichy Gaming, so they were big in China, I, I had no idea. And it had Kyle Blue switches, which was pretty decent. And I was really into the clicky switch at the time. So my first keyboard being the clicky, cheap Kyle switch just kind of was very fitting. The only problem with that was it was cheap and crap. So it only lasted me really uh, like six months. I think it's got to do with the fact that, you know, the windows were, you know, the window shades were left open all the time and there was a lot of heat in my room. So, you know, the solder kind of deteriorated. But basically the keyboard wasn't that good and it didn't last me for very long, which was a bummer because being a 13, 14 year old at the time, I had no real money to really replace it with anything too good. Now, my follow up for this keyboard was something that I saved up heavily for and that was Logitech G710 Plus. I went ahead and bought it second hand. I think actually first hand it was refurbished. So it was kind of brand new, pretty much brand new. I loved it, but the only problem with it was my desk was kind of narrow. So it took up a lot of space with the extra keys. It's a full size keyboard with extra macro buttons. And it was big, bulky, but it's a beautiful design. And to this day, I still really like how the G710 Plus looks. And it's got nice, I think pretty good sound and Cherry Max Browns, yes, aren't amazing, but they're decent. I mean, they get the job done and they were a good start. And back then in like 2015, 2016, Cherry Max Browns aren't, weren't as crapped on as they are today. And then I saw that because it was time to get a different keyboard. I was like feeling something different. So I actually went through a bunch of different keyboards. So I think there was a period of time I used a Cooler Master keyboard that was 10 keyless. Then I had a Ducky keyboard that was 10 keyless. Uh, and they're both pretty interesting, I guess. And I bought a poker keyboard with black switches, which was too stiff, so I didn't like it. And it was the one where I kind of ruined with my modding, by the way, if you know what video I'm talking about, tell me. Poker keyboard, I, I liked the small form factor because my desk was very tiny at the time. And I also liked how it gave me more space to move my mouse, but the poker keyboard with black yeah, Cherry Max switches were too stiff, so I went continued looking. And at this point in time, I read up about Garon switches and learned more about the world of custom mechanical keyboards. And I stumbled across this post. So this guy was selling this custom mechanical keyboard for like 50 bucks. Garon Browns with a custom PCB and a very beautiful aluminum case and some nice IKBC stock caps. And I was like, that looks wonderful. That looks gorgeous. I want it. And he even traveled to my an MRC station near my house and we did the deal. And that was that and that became my keyboard for the longest period of time. In fact, three, four years. 
I think is about right. Beautiful, beautiful keyboard. It had RGB features, acrylic light diffusion on the bottom. The case was aluminium and I replaced the keycaps with this very clean aesthetic kind of DSA keycap set that I still love to this day. It's a keyboard I will never throw away or sell or give away because it is my favorite keyboard of all time. There are a few problems with it though nowadays now that it's old, the mini USB connection is kind of wonky. At least it has a detachable cable register. Some of the switches on this keyboard kind of don't register as accurately and as responsively as, as it was when it was brand new. So, you know, that's what happens when you abuse a keyboard for years and years. But, you know, it's still my favorite. I'm going to display it if I ever get an apartment, which won't be anytime soon. But I love that keyboard and has sentimental value to me. Now, in this whole period of time, I actually was trying a lot of different keyboards. One of those keyboards I bought was the N Pro keyboard. It's good. But the thing is, I removed the battery and I once I plugged it back in, it decided the battery the battery just decided, you know, I'm never gonna work again. So as a result, my Ampro can't be wireless or Bluetooth, which is a bummer, and RGB doesn't work, which is also a bummer, but it still works as a perfectly working get around blue clicky keyboard. I use it for diagnosis nowadays mainly. I'm planning to sell it, but I think I would fix it first just to retain and obtain some more value out of it. So that's that. Uh, the next thing that I bought, I think about this time I decided, you know, I was just kind of sick of buying mechanical keyboards until I stumbled across this Gateron Yellow keyboard, this with that's a poker size and beautiful. It was clean, simple and very nice. I really liked it because it was USB-C and I thought it was everything I wanted because Lube Gateron Yellows are smoother than a baby's bottom and I was like, okay, this, this could be it. This could be that keyboard I really want. I buy it and some of the keys don't really register properly and I got a slight refund for that, so that's fine. And I found the Get On Yellows actually a bit stiff for typing, even though they were supposed to be pretty light. So kind of a bummer there, which is kind of unfortunate, but sometimes you just get bad luck with things and you just gotta live and learn. I still have that keyboard today. I probably want to sell it down the road, but I need to figure something out in terms of like pricing and, and actually logistics because selling stuff is kind of a hassle. So I, I'm just like, okay, um, I guess I'll just go back to my Gateron Browns, my favorite custom keyboard then. And I continue to use it for a couple of months. And I still love it and it's still great. But the problem is I'm doing just crazy video edits. I'm doing daily uploads pretty much, close to daily uploads. I'm doing two, three uploads a day, that kind of stuff. So it was, it was very difficult to keep up with the schedule using just a keyboard. And I wanted to be as efficient as possible because keeping up with the schedule was hard enough already. So having to use macro keys or combination shortcuts just to access the F keys or arrow keys just to you know do certain functions like taking a screenshot with Nvidia Shadow Play or you know going through your timeline was difficult without arrow keys at least if you want to go precise in terms of your movements. So I was like okay it's time to go back and go back to the beginning and get a 10 keyless keyboard. And now that I have a much bigger desk than I used to, uh, I don't play that much Counter-Strike nowadays. So I realized I don't really need that much kind of optimized mouse space and stuff, and I found it perfectly fine. So when Techware offered to send over the Phantom keyboard, I was very happy, it was a tankless keyboard. They sent over the Otemu RAID switches, which was kind of interesting, because I my experience with linear switches is that they're generally a bit too stiff for me. But the Otamu Reds were just nice and they were very light. If I wanted to really take them to another level, I could take them out with the hop swappable kind of switch design and lube them before plonking that back in, which I might do in the future if I have more time. The only problem now is I'm juggling YouTube, I'm juggling video production, I'm juggling I'm working in the army, I'm juggling. So I don't really have time to do the really intense niche uh, mechanical keyboard stuff, at least for now. But in the future, I might consider lubing it and stuff. But I love the Tech Web Phantom so far. It's got pretty nice build quality. The stock keycaps are decent. I like the RGB, it looks pretty nice. Um, the switches are fine. And I most importantly, what the most important thing for me, frankly, is just that it's a 10 keyless keyboard. It's got arrow keys and F keys and got a home end key, which is stuff that I use all the time. And I found myself missing a lot the whole couple of years where I was on a 60% keyboard. So now that I have more space and can afford to have a nice keyboard that's 10 keyless, you know, I'm glad that I'm able to do all that. But you know, it's it's good to, I guess, 
take a tour if you're into mechanical keyboards and explore a bit. But you know, at the end of the day, you have to take a step back and think about what exactly you need. Like a 60% keyboard might look really good. A HHKB, you know, weird Leopold design might look really good. But if it doesn't have the keys you need that you use all the time, you're gonna find yourself being very annoyed. And I think that's the moral of this whole story, is that if you wanna buy something, you gotta make sure that all the bases are covered. And I think practicality should always be king with tech purchases, because tech purchases are tools at the end of the day. Sure, mechanical keyboards do have that human touch to them, that mechanical analog feel to them. And that is definitely a large aspect of why people buy mechanical keyboards at all. But if it can't even serve basic functions and get the job done for you in a convenient matter, I'm not saying that people who use 40% keyboards are wrong. If it works for them well, then it's fine. But if you are someone who needs certain keys or you need the functionality or you hate having to remember shortcuts, functions and macros, then you have to get a keyboard with more keys or stuff like that. You know. When you shop for mechanical keyboard, beauty is king and beauty is often deceiving. But just like dating, looks are often deceiving and often shouldn't be the first main thing that you're thinking about. So that's kind of the whole story of my journey from 10 keyless to full size to 10 keyless to 60% to 60% to 60% to 10 keyless. I thought it would be pretty interesting because mechanical keyboard videos do well on this channel. So I think a lot of people on this channel really like talking about and watching videos about mechanical keyboards. So this little sharing session, I hope has been interesting at the very least to you guys. And if it wasn't, at least I hope it was semi helpful. If you did find this video good in any way, liked it, enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, support this channel. I'm doing a daily grind, kind of daily upload grind schedule, which is very, very difficult on me because you know I'm trying to juggle so many things at once but 2021 is gonna be my year that's my ambition I'm gonna push myself and I hope you guys are there with me to to support my journey of pushing and pushing and pushing and chasing something on another level I want to hit another level and I'm not gonna get there by being normal so thank you guys so much for watching I'm gonna end this video off here uh, follow me on my socials blah 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 see you guys tomorrow goodbye